everybody and welcome to worship with the churches of Fleet United Reformed Church and Beacon Hill United Reformed Church. My name is Ruth Dillon and I'm the Minister of Fleet and Beacon Hill and I shall be leading us in worship today. You are all most welcome. Our opening words are taken from Psalm 26 verses 1 to 8. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence. Go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The theme for today's service is Take Up Your Cross. And it's where we're invited by Jesus to share in his story, which is as tough as it is good. However, let us pause and put aside the distractions of this moment and of this day. To be still before our God. To abide in the shadow of God. To be with the God in whom we trust. Amen. We're going to be hearing our introit this morning um, from Nessie Black, who's the organist at Fleet United Reformed Church. Thank you. can I invite you to say the words in the bold type on your service sheet? God calls us to worship in spirit and in truth, in sadness and indescribable hope, as we reflect on all that Jesus went through for us. Praise God who goes beyond all expectations. 
You do not ask us to go anywhere you haven't been. You call us to take up our cross and we come to you with fear and trembling. But knowing that ultimately your way is the best. Be with us, Lord, and help us to understand. Amen. Now we come to our prayers of adoration and confession and also the Lord's Prayer. And as we say these opening prayers, there is a response when we come to the prayers of confession. And they're written on your order of service. When I say the words, forgive me, Lord, can you respond by saying in the first section, and set me on, on your path? And in the second section, and help me to take up my cross? And the third section, and help, and help me follow you. And so now let us come to God in prayer. Lord God, you invite us to come in and share your story. We stand amazed in your presence, Lord. We wait on you, lost in wonder, that the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And you want us to. We adore you, Lord above all. Lord, I acknowledge before you that often I can be like Peter, hearing your word, but going off on my own track, not wanting to see your path, especially if it looks rough. Forgive me, Lord and set me on your path. Lord, we acknowledge before you that there are times when we want the world, but we don't give much thought to our soul. Forgive me, Lord, and help me to take up my cross. Lord, we acknowledge before you there are times when we're like a stumbling block to others and also to myself. Times when we look for complications instead of just following you. Forgive me, Lord, and help me to follow you. And now let us be silent before God as we open our hearts to seek God's forgiveness. God, in whom we live and move and have our being, your tenderness and mercy surrounding us and making us whole again, restored, forgiven and free. In your sight, we are new creations, full of potential and vessels of love. You say to each one of us, your sins are truly forgiven. Yet you also say these words, come now and follow me. And now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his friends to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now we're going to be hearing the two lectionary readings this morning, one taken from Jeremiah and the other from the Gospel of Matthew. The reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 15, beginning at verse 15. You understand, O Lord. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revellers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending, and my wound grievous and incurable? Will you be to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesperson. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the cruel. This is the word of the Lord. Matthew chapter 16 verses 21 to 28 Jesus predicts his death from that time Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders chief priests and teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him never Lord he said, shall this happen to you? Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our strength and our comforter. Amen. Hearing the stories of Jesus can be so encouraging. Which is your favourite, I wonder? Is it the infancy narratives that we hear at Christmas? Is it the Easter resurrection account? Or the many stories of Jesus where he's talking to ordinary people? Stories hook us and immerse us into that context 
as in the miraculous healing accounts, and the change of heart in Zacchaeus as he climbs down the tree. It's as if we become part of the scene. However, in the Gospel of Matthew, we hear a very different story. Jesus is speaking directly to his disciples, and it does make uncomfortable reading. Events must have been going really well, and the disciples were doing all the right things, learning from Jesus' teachings, feeling confident, and witnessing to people in large crowds, and where Jesus used metaphors of vines and shepherds and food to represent the images of the kingdom of God. A few verses before the lectionary reading that we've just heard from Matthew, Peter has even declared Jesus as being the Messiah, son of the living God, and Jesus praises him. However, three verses later, we read that Peter rebukes Jesus for talking about the great suffering that he must endure. Peter recognises immediately that Jesus was not the warrior revolutionary king that he'd expected, but a Messiah who would suffer. And this was all too human for Peter. There are two areas of this passage that we need to take seriously. The first is suffering. It's the one area that we disciples must endure if we are to follow Jesus. Here Jesus is suggesting that his kingship is born of suffering and its glory is seen in suffering on behalf of a world that needs a story more powerful than another conqueror on a white charger. It needs a story of one who liberates, of one who overcome the odds through suffering, through the cross. And the second theme is hope. Hope finding the one true reward in life. It's not by clinging on to the things that matter to us, the insights that we have, or even the place that we've carved out in the world for ourselves. All these things can be lost. And Jesus says that it's only when we lose everything that we find what we long for. Therefore, this passage is really saying to us, as Jesus' disciples, be patient in your suffering. For in your, in your patience, hope will spring eternal. In recent months, I've been uh, humbled to witness the courage and strength of people who are experiencing difficulties in their lives. Some may have a strong belief that God is present and aware of God's presence surrounding them in love. And it's this belief that sustains them. But others find it difficult to acknowledge and even articulate a God. It is natural that we and our family and friends protect ourselves from pain and suffering and I'm sure many people watching and listening to this worship service have experienced both of these distresses. However, if we protect ourselves from pain, we make our own prisons as we begin to die emotionally and spiritually. In Matthew, Jesus speaks to the disciples about carrying their cross. Now, I'm sure that you can recall people who it seems to have had their fair share of trials and tribulations. And yes, we too may ask, God, why? However, sometimes individuals may want to encourage a person in an, unhel in an unhelpful manner. 
So be cautious when a friend who is trying to protect you says innocently, surely God doesn't want you to face this. No, God does not want us to face this, but like it or not, pain and suffering are part of our humanity. We can't duck away from it. What is interesting is that when as followers of Jesus we suffer, or we know people who are suffering, we turn to God in prayer. I thought and reflected on prayer over the years and it seems to me that there is a deep, a deep inside every person that there is a, a, a requirement to commune with that source of life. Whether you have a faith or not, there is a presence that calls us into wholeness. It's something that nudges us into community and caring for others. And prayer is the offering of our life and love through the simple action of sharing our friendship and our acceptance. It's being present, sharing God's love with another human being. That is the gift of prayer. And hope, it seems to me, is the essence of our Christian faith. Hope that events will stabilise, relationships will improve. Hope that the injustice in the world will be addressed. Hope that the burden is not too heavy. Hope that in God, strength can be found. Hope that God uses people to do his work on this earth. Hope that God will use each one of us. Hope that through our suffering, a deep sense of transformation will occur. And, the, and that cross stands witness to the transformative power of Jesus. And Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and follow me. And the spirit within us replies, all of you be an ardent spirit, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. These things will bring glory to the kingdom of God. Amen. And now let us come to God uh, in prayer. God, the source of life, who calls us to live fully. God, the source of life, calls us to love wastefully. God, the ground of being, calls us to have the courage to be ourselves. So when we love, live and have the courage to be, we are expanding our humanity and to the call that you have given us. Enable us always to be aware of your presence. Amen. Now we're going to sing um, a very familiar hymn and a favourite hymn in both our congregations and indeed throughout the Christian world. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way. <laughs>
come to our prayers of intercession and there is a response to our prayers of intercession today when I say merciful God can I invite you to respond by saying hear our prayer merciful God hear our prayer and so let us pray Lord God, you reproached Peter because he had only human concerns. But Peter just wanted to protect the one he loved. We pray for people the world over who find themselves in difficult situations. We pray that they would all have someone to care for them and lift them before you. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, for all who are misunderstood, for asylum seekers who flee real danger in their homeland. We pray for those who work tirelessly to address wrongs. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for people whose lives don't always work out right. Through their fault or through no fault of their own. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for people in our lives who need your protection, Lord. That we will always be faithful in prayer for them. Merciful God, hear our prayer. In the silence, Lord, we pray for people and situations that we are aware and that we and that we are they are needing your prayers and our prayers at this time. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, 
that we may never be fearful of taking up our cross, knowing that your strength will guide us and help us focus on the path ahead. Amen. Well, as we come to the end of our worship service, it's been good to share worship with you this morning and I look forward to sharing it again. And now let's have our closing prayer and blessing. Lord God, you knew what was going to happen to you. You didn't flinch or back away. You calmly told the disciples and us what to expect. As we leave now, in our own homes, remind us constantly to look to you in the good and the tough times. Guide us as we go in your name. Amen. And may the blessing of God that is truly beyond all human understanding remain with, the, with you this day and each day. Amen. Thank you.